see you getting so old, your memories are like everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I haven't forgot you, dear. I haven't got you. Mm. I probably, I probably, I probably, if I don't get you tomorrow, I get you a Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, I'll get you Wednesday, tomorrow or Wednesday. You ain't gonna believe me, my neighbor behind me is leaving. What? Yep, they are they, leaving. Oh, they're going, they, oh, my, my. They, they bought my house up around Rock, somewhere around Rock and Mount. Oh. Cause you say he's he job. Yeah, that's what I do. I thought you said he uh, uh, worked in Rocky Mountain. Uh, I, I, she said, yeah, I think it must be on the other side of Rocky Mountain. She said he'd leave home 6 o'clock in the morning and I'd go to work. He'd go to work at 7. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Yeah. Some morning he'd leave for then because it had been time or two. I, I had to be up and see light in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. A light on my side of the house, anyhow. Right. And I, mm-hmm. sometimes I can hear the door close. I don't hear the car crank up, but I hear the door close when you get in the right. car. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, when Sunday school over here this morning, I'm going to get on off this morning. I ain't going to stay for the service. I got to get ready for my funeral this evening. Who's funeral? My last uncle, Marion Riggs. That's my last uncle. Oh, Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. How old was it? 98. Oh, okay. Didn't quite mm-hmm. make the 100. No, he didn't quite make the 100. But, mm-hmm. yeah. but that was, ooh. Yeah, yeah. He, he could see a that. whole lot of moons and he could tell you a whole lot of things if he could remember. Yeah, yeah. I see. Underpinned my house with my bricks and stuff. Okay. Yeah, he did. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I would love to sit around some old, old people and hear about when they were growing up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What yeah. they did and all of this stuff. Yeah, he was in, he was in, he been in service too. He went in service too and stayed some years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Getting up following them news all the day. <laughs> Come yeah, home yeah. with had to cut wood, get up good wood and Woo. I didn't have to follow the news, but I had to help get some wood up and out the wood. Oh shoot, I used to get wood out of the wood myself. Yeah, I used to have to help do that. And it was fun to me. <laughs> I love to go out there and find a tree and say, okay, I believe I cut this one down. Boy, that I could tear it up to. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we were in school though, and Devin would go out there and find wood and cut up and pile up. And then when I get home, they'd be hauling something, and then I still had to hit. Mm-hmm. But I didn't mind that because I get a chance to drive to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the wagon, put it on the mule and wagon and bring it to the house. Yeah, yeah, I'm loaded. If they'd have had a cross cut saw, he'd bring it up to the house. We saw it up, thought me lost me, could have saw it up before we get out there and tear it up. Saw it up, busted up, and then piled some on the pool. Good morning, how's everyone doing? Good morning, I'm Lou. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Doing good. Doing good. How about you? How about you still? Well, I guess you ain't doing what's nothing. I mean, he trying to get everything hooked up already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I see this. I see this. I got 10 o'clock. I don't know if the basement on this morning or not, so I, I don't hear it this morning. But I know I got to get somebody to do uh, the minutes for me this morning because uh, Lanita says she's on the road and uh, she won't be able to take, take the note this morning. Yeah. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. We heard you. We hear you.
You may now. Good morning, can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear us? Evidently, he ain't hearing us. What I'm facing you on this morning? Good morning, can you hear us? I can hear you, can you hear us? Yeah, well, I can hear you now. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Reverend Faison is with us. Okay, so I see it. Ten o'clock. We ain't going to prolong the Sunday school this morning. We're going to go over up this morning. I'm going to ask Mother Barnes to lead us in a song this morning. Reverend Faison did our prayer this morning. And before I go into prayer, I would like to get someone to keep our minutes this morning from Eden Church. Of Manita House is uh, Reverend Minister Howard is on the road this morning, but she said she would be on, but she couldn't keep the notes this morning. So anyone from either church, will y'all keep in one, keep the notes this morning, the minutes this morning? I think somebody will take care of it. Okay, then. Thank you, Rev. Thank you, Reverend Lewis. All right, we're going to go and open up this morning, Mother Barnes. God sent his son, they call him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all truth is gone, alright, I know. I'm looking all cross-eyed and every which way this morning. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Mm, okay, that's it for me. Okay, just thank you, thank you, Mother Bob, for the song this morning, Because He Lives. Mm -hmm. Now we're here for our first, first facing this morning. First facing this morning. Okay, Father God, first of all, we want to thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to come into your presence, God, at this hour. We know we're in the presence of the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know, God, that you the God and that you the holy God. And then, Lord, we give you glory this morning. God, we give you praise, Lord, for being able to, to, being able to come into your presence at this hour to study this Sunday school lesson, God, in the name of Jesus. And then, God, I'm asking you to touch out a Sunday school teacher, God, this morning. And knowing her prayers from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. Lord, down in your storehouse, the wisdom and knowledge, Father, that she come forth you go, for your glory. Open up our spiritual ears, Lord, so we can understand this Sunday school lesson this morning. We want to thank you, God, for last night's sleep as we lay slumbered and slept in the state of death. How you placed an angel by our bedside to keep an eye on this whole beat of hour. We just want to thank you this morning, God, and give you glory. And give you praise, God. Inviting your Holy Spirit, God, your anointing, God, into the house this morning, God. Have your way, God, in this house, in the name of Jesus. And then, God, teach us how to pray. Thanks to pray for our Father. We need you, God, in a day and a time like the sin, Father, with its trouble on every hand. But all we've got to do is hold on to your unchanging hand, and you will make everything all right, Father God. Just pray our labor for thee this morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Faith, for that beautiful prayer this morning. You and Mother Barn both. Now we'll turn it over to our Sunday school teacher this morning, Miss Trustee Nancy Wilson. Good morning. 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 Good morning.
as he as he relayed to the people about his experiences. He was a persecutor of this church, and when he had his encounter with the Lord, then things changed. I believe that when he became a man, as through in the spirit and the grace of the Lord, he put away those things. Now, if oh. you have a little time, you might want to read that again and see if you see that, or perhaps you saw something different. But I believe Paul was talking about that. And, and, and let's talk about three reasons for, for Paul putting away childish things that would gradually wash away or erode his ministry and his ability to, stand, to spread the gospel. Now, Paul does not want to speak like a child because he's an apostle. A child, due to lack of experience, would not would not be able to explain things reasonably. And this would be important because the people must be able to understand the message if he is a messenger from the Lord. And then uh, the second Paul was thinking like a child means showing immature and unreasonable action that only serve the interests of the child. Now, you know, we all have seen children play. Even the best of children have a selfish side. And sometimes you hear them screaming and hollering and fighting over a toy. They have an offense and say, it's mine. So Paul's thought had to focus on the message of Jesus with a deep awareness of his calling to evangelize God's people. So Paul, <clears throat> Paul wanted to make sure that, uh, <clears throat> number three, Paul, he faced enemies. He had enemies of his gospel. He had a hard time, and as a messenger of Christ, he was subject to, he was subject to all kinds of trouble, abuse. He had to face, he had to face his battle with love and reason. And, and if he were to attempt to use childlike reason, he would not be able to God doing quickly, which he needed. He needed to guide, uh, guide and hold the churches together. He was trying to hold them together when Satan was trying to rip them apart. So as Paul was doing in the things of God, he became a man. And I believe this this is telling us, this is what verse 11 is talking about. So Paul said, you know, as he grew in the grace of God, all this changed. But before he came to Christ, it was like he was doing things that he could get away with or that he wanted to do to the church, to the Christian, dragging them out, killing them, and all that. So that is something you might want to read later on and see what you got out of it. <laughs> And Paul tells us, he said, love will never bring harm to our neighbor. No, I said, if you, he said, if you owe your neighbor or anyone, pay your debt. But then you only, the only thing you owe him then is love. He said, if you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, you will not want to harm him or cheat him, kill him, uh, covet the things he had. No, you wouldn't want to do that if you love your neighbor as yourself. And you would not want your neighbor to do that to you. And as you look, and Paul says, you know, uh, all the uh, all the Ten Commandments are wrapped up in the one commandment. Can you add up everything in the law? The sum total is low. Paul is telling you now, you know, he says that y'all got special gifts, you, you know, God has given you all gifts. Some of you got special gifts. But he said, it doesn't help the church if you don't have love. If you don't have love, it's it's not going to work. So no matter how great you are or the great sinner you are, great preacher, great teacher, whatever, if you don't have love, it's useless. It's nothing. And he tells us today, if you, you know, love, when you love each other, that's building up the church. Building up the church. Everything is supposed to be geared to building up the church of God. But the Corinthians, a lot of them, they they use their gift. They flock their gift. And they didn't have any love. They didn't care. They wanted their way. 
and and forever if they had their own music to kind of uh, just use it to let people know what they had. They had forgot about what point the where the gift came from and what the purpose of the gift. No, no, no. They just wanted to show off and, and show off their gift. But um, honestly, no matter what you do, I don't care how great you give. He said, but you know. And you got love is nothing because here's the thing about it. All this is they're coming to the and they won't be necessary. These gifts that we have, they won't be gone. There will be no need for them. And everything that's left is going to be love. And he says that the three things of love, hope, and the three things that, that will never end. But he said, I'm interested. Faith, hope, and love. They'll be here. But he said, of the three, but the greatest of these is love. And as Paul talks to the Corinthians and the Romans, he's like, why is it so hard for y'all to love one another? And, and Paul says, you know, if you don't love you know, your neighbor and yourself, you know, everything is called for. He said, love. Love can cost a lot of things. He said, now, if, 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 if you don't love God, then you don't love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you don't love anybody else. And he said, you know, it is so easy to fall in there. He said, now, you, a believer is going to keep the whole law. Not that part of it. Not what's love. Believers will keep the whole law. And that's why you have to start out. If you start out with love, he said, you know, a lot of things will, will fall in place because love comes a whole lot of things. Paul said, how can you, you know, you, you get back to your basics. You love God and you say you love God and you know you love yourself. How can't you love your neighbor? He says, look at all the extravagant stuff that we have out there. What's the poor? They don't have enough to eat. Now, what kind of thing is that? How would that work? He said, you just, you, you have to, if you don't have the, you just will throw it all away and start all over again. And if we look at some of the things that go on in our churches and things, some of us are just like the, the Corinthians and the Romans, especially the Corinthians. And they say, they got these great gifts, and they use it whenever it's for them. They use it for their glory, not glory of God. They they have no no regards for the poor, no regards for the downtrodden. And Paul is saying, if you ain't got no love, you ain't got nothing. Right. Ain't no use even thinking about starting nothing because if you don't have love, love is going to be have to be there. He says, now when all these things pass away, prosper. All the special gifts that God has given you. When this stuff, when all of that passes away, love will be you. And of the three, love is the greatest. So if you don't if you don't have love, then just you know, you may as well not even bother with it. And as we think about that sometimes, we have to ask ourselves, do we really have the love for people in our home, in our church, in our community, those who are less fortunate than we are, do we really have that? Our country will think they should have somebody else, but they got people here that can't pay the rent. They, they got people here in America that, you know, on the street, and still look up on their own. But do we look after our own? I mean, we, we, he wants us to look out for all people, but I'm saying, we stop at home. So we can come and we can have all these things, and, and the neighbors maybe over there don't have enough food to eat. What are we doing with the gifts and all the stuff that God has given us? And sometimes, you know, some people are hard to love. Sometimes in our churches, we have people that's hard to love, but God says we got to love them. Mm-hmm. And if God says we got to love them, he will, he will think so so we can love them. Mm-hmm. 
Sometimes there are people that they call EGR people that extra grace required. They need a little more grace. Sometimes you gotta be a little more patient with some people. But God says, you gotta look. They, uh, I said, so you look sinners. I live to, I die for you. So now you can at least love your neighbor. And your neighbor may be next door or whatever. He said, but you got to love them. The people in your church, do you welcome? Do you, are you friendly to them? Or do you have one or two that you still can shake hands on your way out? And Paul said, it, it can't be like that. That's why your church is in such a mess. He said, it's only going to get worse. You have got to change the way you, t- you feel about people. You see, uh, he said, believers have a duty to look. We have a, we have a duty to look at our neighbors and, and, and be committed to it and make our, make our community and the church able. And, and in a world that needs to be and to love our neighbors, which is far beyond the next driveway or the yard next door. The community of a believer must not be afraid to carry the banner of true love. You see, we, we have to look at our mind. Okay, God says we have to love people. We have to love our enemies, and sometimes it can be so hard. Sometimes they can really, really make it hard for you. But the thing about it is, God's going to give us what we need to do what he wants us to do. Uh-huh. But what they what Paul is telling us, all the speaking in tongues, so he said, what's speaking in tongues and all that, it doesn't, he said, tongues without love, it's no help to anybody but the person who's speaking it. Yeah. You don't have love, all your gifts are good. Mm-hmm. And he does not want to, Paul does not want to, <clears throat> he's telling us, God wants us to show love. If we show love, he knows if we show love, we're not going to harm our neighbor. We're not going to harm anybody if we show love. That's why love is the key thing here. And as as Paul goes around with his teaching out, it comes right back to love. No matter what, he says, you, if you have love, you're not going to cheat your neighbor. You're not going to steal from him. You're not going to want what he got. You're going to be glad that he has that and, and, and give God glory for that. But you're not, you're not going to put him at all. You're not going to want what he wants. You say, well, I'm glad you got this. Or I'm glad you got the house you want it, or glad you got the car you want or whatever, the promotion. But you're not going to cover it. And if you love, you'll never, if you have real love like Paul is talking about me, you're not going to that's like and say, I went there, I wish that I had better what you're not even gonna come if what he has. You're gonna praise God with him for what God has given him. And if you love him and if he's in need, you're gonna come and see about him. But well, Paul said now this is how it all starts. If you take love of God, you really don't have anything. He said, Now, love takes care of a whole lot of things. He mm-hmm. said, now, for you, he said, so what, we, what you're going to have to do is hard, but you're going to have to love him. You're going to ask God to help you love people. Because believe me, there are some people only God can help us love them. Because the left to us, we, we couldn't handle it. Mm-hmm. We, we may sometimes, but we wouldn't really love them. But Paul is talking about, he's talking about things so like when you go, when you go into the house of God and you look and you see all your, your fellow parishioners, you say, well, good morning. How you doing? How you doing? You're shaking hands hand and y'all laughing and talking. I hadn't seen each other probably maybe in a week or so. And you're shaking hands. That deep love, sincere love, not this kind of love that you think is, uh, they might, I might can get something wrong from them or they might can be of use to me. And they can be with somebody that I want you to love. I'm not the selfish reason. Love them because we all have the same power. We all belong in the same family. And, and so when 
you come in, you can tell genuine love. But God don't want to come, like I said, shake somebody's hand and we're on our way out or either go the other way so we don't have to have conversations too. That's not the love that God's talking about. God is talking about real love. And, and, you know, if we want to make the church and the world a better place, we must take a look at ourselves in the mirror and test ourselves and look and make the necessary change. And Christians believe we have all the basic tools we, we, we do to do just what that is, just to do just that to Jesus Christ. And we need us to feel like we have the tools we need. So if we got the tools we need, then we got to go to work. And if we don't have them, we got to ask God for them. That love is just your faith, hope, and love. Those three, when everything else is passed away. So Paul was telling me, now, you know, you're good with your gifts, uh, your your tongues, this many tongues, and uh, all this stuff, but you know, don't go back to this house. One day we're just gonna have one language, one heavenly language coming in for everybody to speak. Uh-huh. Now all of your apostles, all that stuff, that is good. It's been good here, but Paul said, "What I'm telling you, it's going to go. It's going to vanish. We ain't gonna need that now. You where you what you know now is a little bit, but we don't know the whole thing. And you're not going. You know you're not gonna need." What you got is that the gift God has given us today, one day, all of it will pass away. And we won't need it. Mm-hmm. We won't need that in the next world. Because God has everything out there in place for us. And we'll be complete then. Because he says we look now, it's like looking through a mirror, kind of family, kind of dark. But we'll be able to see things clearly then. And we won't need the and all that stuff. We don't need all that thing. All mm-hmm. that'll be gone. And what will be there? Faith, hope, and love. But then the greatest of all is that we love. So if that's what is going to happen, then we just have to get out of there. Like I said before, I know there's still a hard to love something. But God tell us. You know, we have to put forth the effort and God will do the work because he can fix things behind the scenes like you ain't never heard of. That's just right. had a situation and just wondering how the world can, you know, what I'm going to do about this, what I'm going to do about that. And people say, Lord, I'm going to give it to you. What are you going to do that? I'm going to give it to you and whatever the outcome is going to be what you had meant. Mm-hmm. And then God will fix it. He will mm-hmm. definitely fix some things. Yes, sir. When you don't know what to do, do nothing and give it to God. Pray about it, give it to God, and leave it there. And so I'm saying, like Thomas said, first of all, we decide. We decide we can do what God wants to do. If we love people, then we don't have to worry about harming people and then having to deal with the consequences. So he, he tells us that now if you love, if you have love, that takes care of all those other loves. Everything is wrapped up in that, that, that one love. Love. That will, that will take care of so much. When you got love for people, you don't mind helping them. You see them, you greet them, and sincerely greet them. But um, the thing about it is, how say now, if you don't have the love, just think about it. All of the gifts you got. It don't mean nothing. It's, it's nothing. Because you say, you need to be for real. He said, so all that you do, all of that beautiful singing, great preaching, good teaching, and all that. But do you have love? Do you have love in your heart? Do you love God? Do you love people? Because you know you love yourself. So he said that if you love your neighbor just like you love yourself, then you know, it can be a problem because you're not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to talk about yourself. You're not going to, you, you know, you're going to treat people right. 
you don't treat yourself right. So if you love these people as you love yourself, then everybody can come can come along saying that we can sense the other. One would help this one and that one would help another one. And before you know it, you become a whole living of church of people that's loving, that's growing about the things of God. So he says, people, for the believers, you know, we've been called, if we have been called, called for this purpose, and we strive to become men and women of God, I believe we God love is unlimited, and it will never fail. Yes. And so, what have we to do? Uh-huh. And so, as we, as we end our lesson, we think about it now. We know we are up against a lot of things in this world. And the people would be like, see, God wants to love the bad people. As a human being, <laughs> we don't like to do that. We love the good ones, or we love the ones we like. So God says we have to have us to love all of them. Love your neighbor. It could be next door, it could be the next county. But he said, love your neighbor. He said, and, and lift up support and lift up each other in the house of God. Help them out. And, and be for real. Be sincere. He's given some people such great talent and special things. He's given them. He said, but if you don't have love in it, it ain't nothing. That's he right. People, people great talent for preaching, speaking, and all that stuff. But if you don't have love behind it, it's no good. All it did was made you like you wanted to be, made you feel like you were somebody. That's not what Paul wants. Everybody is somebody in the house of the Lord. Mm-hmm. He made us all, we all belong to the same thing. That's right. And he wants us to act like it. Amen. So, and no matter what we do, we think about the gifts we want, all of us got people. Some maybe have some special gifts, but we all got them. Mm-hmm. One's going to have to say when you can know how to use that gift. The gifts will be necessary. It won't even be needed. What do you got to do? But if you got love, like God said, you don't have to worry because it's eternal. Love is vicious when everything is done. So as we as we think about it as and think about it and, and play over our situation, it's a up to your journey. So we have to ask God to show us. Show us and then hold our hand as we as we take this journey. Because we are really up against some stuff. But God knows. He says, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. And then you will have obeyed all the commandments. Of the love. Mm-hmm. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you this morning and thank God for that awesome lesson where you taught this morning. And I was looking at one word that about that charity. Charity is love. Christ is love. And Christ wants us to love as He loves. He wants us to be real. He wants our heart to be pure. He don't want us to say, I love you because that's lip love. It got to come from the heart and it got to be real. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and then when you're doing stuff, you got to do so. Uh, you, you need to do it and do it in the right way. Do it in decent and in order. And love is something that you have to show, not just say it. You can tell a person all day long that you love them unless you do something to prove that fact that saying I love you don't mean a thing. That's right. But love is an action word. That's you right. don't mean anything until you give it away. That's the best thing you can give. You can treat people in a way that they know you love them. That's why I said the action word. Mm-hmm. It's the best gift that you can give anybody is love. Amen. Don't just tell me. Don't just tell me. Show me. Yes. Thank you.
the person next door. It can be somebody five miles down the road that needs your help. What yeah. kind of person would I be if I walk out the door and see my neighbor that actually does live next door to me laying on the ground and I get in my car and go on about my business instead of checking on my neighbor, see what can I do for them, see if they're hurt, see if they need an ambulance or police or whatever. That's not being neighborly. Amen. And since Nancy, I really love, love, love how you taught this list. I love how you teach all of them, but what you really opened my eyes up to, because I got stuck on that age, like when I was a child, I thought, thank you for clarifying that for me. Because well, I, I know, yes, ma'am, I thank you, thank you, thank you. You really clarified that for me. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you know that. Man, just just like and, I, go ahead. And then and then said Nathan, you talked about helping helping our people right here in America, our America people. So they helping their home people first because we got homeless people. They'll take funds and send them somewhere else, and that's not right. Help your people at home, and then whatever you have left, share it with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, in a, a couple of years ago, I found some people that I didn't know. I didn't know. Then uh, the lady, it was the lady her husband had died, and I said, "Well, I'm gonna do something for him." So I took some food for him and carried it to the house. And last this past week, she called me and told me that. Their children, her children, want to see me for uh, Thanksgiving and want me to do some more cooking for them. So I said, well, that was a good thing there for me because they didn't know me at all. Um, so I still do things for the lady when she called me asking me to do stuff for her. So I don't charge her nothing either because that's, that's my love and my thought for her. I know she has the lady. Amen. Amen. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. Well, also, since Nancy, go ahead, go ahead. Also, since Nancy, what you taught me this morning is I got some maturing to do. We all do. Trusty, trusty, trusty Ruth. The lesson was taught very well this morning. I truly enjoyed it. Thank you, ma'am. I'm glad you did. And I always enjoy your lessons. Mm. Yes, I want to say I enjoyed also. Um, uh, I always enjoy it. Look forward to it. And um, yes, we should um, grow daily. Um, you know, we we talking about love. Um, you know. When, when something going on, y your neighbors, your or anybody you know, and you know they they need something, and you basically know what they need, so you know just do it. You don't ask them what can I do for you. Just do it. I mean, you know, we 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 always doing things that 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 that's for us. But for me, love is when you give it away, when you do stuff, when you give your last. Because if if we say we are the children of God, then then He's gonna gonna take care of us. So we just do what's right. It, it makes me it makes me happy to know that people around me are happy. Because when people around me are not happy, then I'm not happy. You know, uh, especially during the time when folks sick or or, or, or something they lost a loved one. Do something for them. Um, like uh, 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 Deacon just said right then. Um, I remember when I took some food to someone's house. Um, I was always doing that plus video and, and don't charge them. And, 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 and I took some food to the person's house and they said, you know, that's what we used to do back in the day. You know, I mean, you know, we, when we learn better, we should do better. You know, we get stuck on ourselves half of the time. Show some love to other folk. And you'll get it back. I believe you'll get it back. Well, I know you will because I get it back all the time. I give my last sometimes. I my last. And, and we say stuff and, and we take it out of content. 
I didn't say I gave my last. I didn't give my last, but still, I was at the bottom. But just knowing that if I give over here, I'm going to get it back. So just, 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 just if you trust in him, then, then stop talking about you trust in him and, 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 and show it. And, 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 and you'll see that, hey, this journey we own, it, it'll make it much better. Because if we take care of our neighborhoods, uh, you take care of your neighborhood, then we all, uh, 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 um, you know, we, we, we get what we need to get. And it's okay to give outside of home sometimes, but still know that home is first. So we just all do what we're supposed to do and stop making it all about us. And, 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 and say, for instance, during election time, it ain't about what I can uh, uh, support the person, what the benefits I get. If the benefits don't touch everybody else, then that's that's crazy. Why would I want to gain benefits from a person in authority, in the church or anywhere, if everybody ain't gonna benefit? Stop making it about you. If it's if you're gonna show love, show love, make it about the people around you. People are hurting. And we are not quite at that level of hurt. So let's do something for those people. People are hurting. And I'll shut it down. As, uh, as the civil rights leader used to say, until all is free, nobody is free. Uh, other comments? Yeah, you know, I got to say this. Uh, you know, uh, I might love, once you love somebody, uh, you know, not in a push name way, but just doing stuff for people, you know, love will carry your name a long, long way. Yes, and you think about the fact that um, when God rewards you for your good action, it's not always a material thing. Sometimes he have our help. Our help to get better. We're doing well. We're not a sickly. So he has all kinds of ways to bless us. That's right. Yeah. I, I do want to say this. I tell you, we... I, I just, it, for me, I'm, I'm just having a hard time. Um, we in the black community, we just got to have some hard conversations because it's a lot of stuff going on. Our children, and, and we are not together. We, we, they. How can we think they are going to to get there? We, we got to show love amongst ourselves. I, I heard a, a something this morning. Uh, um, um, someone said that um, you know, if how can you? A, a teacher, how can a teacher uh, uh, teach the children, you say children first, but if who they are working for are not treating them right, how can that teacher go to school and, and, and be uh, uh, about your child? So we got to we gotta take these things in perspective because everything that sounds good ain't good. We got to look at the root of it. And, and I'm done. Amen. The bottom line is we must be, we must show love and we must be sincere. Amen. If there aren't any, are there any other comments? If not, this concludes our furniture lesson. Thank you this morning. Trustee Nancy for that wonderful lesson this morning. And uh, I know we have comments from all, but I was just going to run this through. But you know, from hatred, anybody can respond on what they got out of the lesson this morning. What we got out of the lesson this morning. For me, it's uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Is like doing, not doing to others that you don't want done to you. Treat people the way you want to be treated. That's right. Amen. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Do we go any further? If not, we have, uh, thank uh, Trustee Room again for the lesson. Thank the one that responded. Now we're here from our city and secretary this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, 
almost forgot that I was the city and secretary. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, good morning. Well, we thank everyone for, for joining in with us and what with this last member here in. Um, and a very lively uh, discussion this morning. Um, minutes for St. Uh, Stephen's and Anderson Chapel uh, Sunday Church School for November the 12th. Sunday School was called to order by Deacon uh, 10 a.m. by Deacon uh, Ricks. Opening song, Because He Live by Mother Barnes. Prayer was given by Brother Faison. Lesson topic, The Greatest Gift. Background, Magic, um, Patches. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 11, and Romans 13, 8 to 10. Key verse. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended. This day, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Romans 19. And now, lesson was reviewed. Thirteen nine. Uh, thank you. Lesson was reviewed for forty minutes. by trustee routine. Remarks was given. And attendance in house twelve, online fifteen, plus those that are joining in through Brother Dancy. And the total uh, without Brother Dancy's total is twenty seven. Um, we thank God for each of you. Today, sitting in Pastor Secretary Pastor Lewis. Uh, uh, this time, we turn it back over to Deacon Rick. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do this for the minutes this morning. I may hear the correction of the minutes this morning. If not, we'll receive the minutes as been read this morning to us. Now, I know we're going into another service this morning, but we're just going to close out with the word Amen. I was going into another service this morning. We'd like to thank you for everyone that's on this morning. So, amen. 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 I just want to say, I just like to say this morning that I won't be on service with you this morning. I'm getting ready to get dressed, and I got my last uncle be buried today. So, his name is Marion, Marion Ricks. So, he's my, that's my last uncle. So, he's coming at uh, 2 o'clock with Eastern Star Missionary Baptist Church over in Tarver, North Carolina. Amen. Those to you and your family, and we're going with you for you. Thank you very much. Amen. We'll have uh, our song by Deacon Hamilton, uh, the scripture by Brother Faith.